MJ here. And Sean here. So we've got part two of our reading list. So these are books that will soon be turned into movies. So get your copies now and you can feel like a smarty pants when the movie comes out. Isn't that right, Sean? Unless they change it. Do you mind? <laughs> really? Uh, we all know you're not literate. Yeah, and sometimes it pays off if they change the movie. When has it ever paid off? Yeah, it really hasn't. When because... have I come out of a movie feeling like an idiot because I read a book? Well, never. Well, never. Uh, that's not always about reading the book, though, because you're very good at seeing where movies are going to go. So yes, you're never because surprised I read, anyway. Because I read so much, I know how a story arcs. I know how writers think. That's true. It's from reading. So if you read, you can be like Jay. So buy all these books, I guess, before the movies. <laughs> or just be yeah. like me and go in blind and probably have a good time anyway. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Why did I invite you in this video? You're, I you're gonna really have not... very little to add. No, not just little to add, but I feel like you're super detracting. Oh, I apologize. Yeah. Reading is fundamental. <sighs> Anyways. Number one on the list is Death on the Nile. Is that an Agatha Christie? It sure is. Yes. It will be the second in the series. You know, Kenneth oh, Branagh. That's right. Wow, bro. So he already solved a case on the murder uh, on, on the, the Orient Express. Express. Now he's going on a cruise ship that is going down the Nile. He gets around. <laughs> he does, yeah. He's been in a lot of exotic locations. It's weird. How so few crimes seem to happen, happen close to home. He really is yes, an international is. guy. Belgium is a quiet place, I guess. <laughs> yes. So this has a big cast, including Gal Gadot, Letitia Wright, Army Hammer, and Indent Benning. I bet Army Hammer did it. <laughs> okay, bold move. Bold move. He's not going to read. You know he's not going to read the no. book, guys. But he's placing bets right now. I don't even know who Army Hammer could be playing, but... I know you don't. He's but... a suspicious character. Okay. So everyone else, write your predictions down below. <laughs> we, we will hold you to these and we will check back in in six months when it comes out. Fair? Fair. Okay. So the next one is one for the kids. It is a roll doll movie from The Witches. Do you okay. know this story? I probably know it. I read basically everything Roald Dahl yes, had to I offer. Know. Yeah. I don't specifically remember The Witches. Okay. So it's the one where a little boy is um, checking out a hotel and he stumbles upon a secret meeting of witches. And they turn him into a mouse. <gasps> Whew. Sounds like something that Roald Dahl would dream up. Yes. <laughs> Presumably uh, an animated movie, this one, with voice work by Anne Hathaway and Octavia Spencer, Stanley Tucci, and Chris Rock. Again, good cast. Good cast. So this one, if anybody has read this book, please let me know. This is the first book that I have not read. It is called Two Kisses for Maddie. And I have to say, right off the bat, <laughs> the bat I'm like, oh, it's one of those. It's one of those books. Where the person's dying. <laughs> Well, uh, I believe the person is basically already dead, yeah. Mm. So a man raises his daughter alone after his wife dies in childbirth. I mean, again, women raise kids by themselves every damn day of the week. No one throws them a parade, but when a man does it, oh my gosh. Book deal, movie star, like, come on. <laughs> this is a little much, but... He self-congratulated his way into a book, and now the book is getting made into a movie called Fatherhood, starring Kevin Hart. It's every dad's dream. Every dad's dream. That's right. Or just us, like you could kill me off and not even have to raise a baby. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah, but that's different. <laughs> okay, that's another book. <laughs> that's a whole different scenario. If I did it. <laughs> yeah, that's the one. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, I am not too sure about this one. I feel like it might be an emotionally manipulative kind of movie. And a little out of Kevin Hart's wheelhouse. Yeah. So we'll see, maybe it'll be good. 
Yeah, he did that one with Brian Cranston. Yeah. And I guess he's expanding upon that. I guess. I was kind of like against that movie because the actual original French movie is is quite good. Anyways, it didn't need a remake, but they did one anyways. As they do. As they always do. Right. So if anyone has read that book, let me know if you liked it. Because <clears throat> I have not read it yet. And will I be able to resist? <laughs> not likely. <laughs> I'm always... You'll get it. It's hard. Okay. This one, Deep Water. Deep Water is about a couple in a loveless marriage where the wife has been given a green card to just sleep with whomever she chooses. And uh, her husband won't care as long as she stays. Um, but the problem with that is that over time, the husband starts getting a little bit jealous and figures a way to turn his wife on is to tell her this story about murder. And then things get out of hand. So, I, I mean, I am not super familiar. I, I feel like I've been married most of my adult life, but I'm still not familiar with the whole, like, reeling the wife in with murder stories. It's um, an angle I certainly never thought you've of. You've never even attempted <laughs> no. to win me back with murder. No. Um, and then, the, you know, the stories become a little bit snowball-y. So this is the movie, uh, the, uh, the set on which uh, Ben Affleck met his quarantine cutie, Anna Diarmas. So they play the couple, I guess, in question. Oh, that's a tough start, I guess, to the uh, quarantine <laughs> relationship. Yes. So, and it also sounds a little too much like Gone Girl. You know, it's, it feels like a weird one for him to choose when he's already kind of done something in this this neck of the weird marriage woods but anyways maybe it'll be good there's always a chance there's a chance that's right now this one i couldn't help but put on my list it is dune yeah dune yeah and the thing is like of course i've read it i read it a long time ago i quite liked it uh, even though i'm not always the biggest fan of sci-fi yeah but we've been through this we have we've debunked that statement yeah you all. like good sci-fi it turns out that i might love sci-fi <laughs> when it's well done, it is among my favorite things to read. Sci-fi and like, you know, not even fantasy, but speculative fiction, we'll say. That's the one. <laughs> but uh, I think it might also help um, to have read Dune before you go into the movie. Certainly, we just watched the like 1980-something movie. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, David Lynch. The David Lynch one. And yeah, I mean, there's just a lot of story in this story and he tried to cram a lot in and i really give him mad props for the effort because i mean he did better than probably anyone else could in that time and place but it was just not it uh, doesn't adaptable. work and yeah. i mean he's he's admitted that david mm -hmm. lynch has admitted that and i credit to him for, for <laughs> recognizing it it doesn't work and it's i don't think he could have done it i hope denis villeneuve can do a, a better job He's, he's having two movies, right, at mm -hmm. least, so... Yeah, he was upfront about that. He told people, like, I, unless you're willing to commit to this being multiples, it's not worth doing again. Um, but I still think it couldn't hurt to know a little bit about the story before going in. And, you know, the thing about the book is, as lousy as that other movie is, it's a great story. Yeah, it is. Um, so... I think it's totally worth reading, even if it wasn't being made into another movie. It's a very cool concept and universe mm -hmm. where the this backwater planet is also the most important planet mm -hmm. in the whole universe. <laughs> yes. Yeah, and I, I um, surprised that, like, I didn't feel confused by the book. I mean, it's a very big book, so there is a lot of detail. But I, I think the book introduces it in nice little chunks that never felt unmanageable. And I hope Villeneuve can carry that over to the movie. But yeah, just in case it's still a little difficult, won't hurt to have read it. It's going to be difficult. Yeah. This is not going to be an easy adaptation. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so the next one is called News of the World. And this is a Western. So it takes place in the time when uh you know before you could look on your smartphone and find out what the news of the day is 
um, just like basically a cowboy would have to, you know, ride to the little towns and bring them the news. And that was the only way you got outside news, which is crazy when you think about that. But it is crazy. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's a very weird thing yeah. to imagine. Mm -hmm. And it's not that long ago. <laughs> yeah. It's really not that long yeah. ago. Mm -hmm. So this guy is riding around to different places in Texas and delivering the news and he happens to, I don't know, find himself mixed up in a kidnapping. So he, he finds a little girl that's been kidnapped and even though it's not his job to do this, I think he makes a rescue attempt. Mm. See, he's making the news now instead of just reporting it. <laughs> yeah. He did not go to journalism school. No, I don't think he did. That's true, Sean. Good, good note. <laughs> so this is another Tom Hanks movie, and it Tom Hanks has been very busy for uh, someone. Yes, uh, that is right. Well, I guess he didn't have coronavirus at the time. No, no, <laughs> that's right. So this one is scheduled for a Christmas Day release. So he, yes. if things go as scheduled, there will be two Tom Hanks movies in theaters this December. Mm -hmm. That's right. If things go as scheduled. <clears throat> Which is not a safe bet at this point. True that. Okay, so the next book. I'm thinking of ending things. Um, so this one is a bit of a bizarre one. It's about a woman who is meeting her boyfriend's parents for the first time in their very remote farm. And disastrous, watch me, disastrous things happen. Which immediately makes me think of Get Out. Yeah. <laughs> now, I have not read this book. You may see that that book is currently on my I night. I did see it coming. Yes. <laughs> you haven't gotten to it yet. But I it's haven't, but it is on my own reading list. And so I will get to it. This movie is being made for Netflix starring Jesse Buckley and Jesse Plemons. So, yeah, I hope one of those two is not about to get murdered. And I hope they're not both named Jesse in the film. <laughs> in the film. That does get confusing, doesn't it? Okay, so the next book on my list is, I believe, another Netflix offering. Uh, so they are going to do another adaptation of the Daphne du Maurier classic, Rebecca. So I think I was telling you this about this before, but you mentioned this movie before, mm -hmm. yes. And I did. definitely know this is not a book that you would have read. Nope, no one that I never <laughs> heard of before that other video. Okay, so uh, a second wife of a widower, you know, they get married. She comes to his house, and once she's there, she starts to feel kind of unwelcome, sort of threatened by the specter of his first dead wife. So uh, Lily James and Army Hammer are in that one. Army Hammer killed his first wife. Well, something nefarious happened. Oh, that's my and the book is quite good. You should read it. I should make you read it. Okay. Mm -hmm. And finally, The Devil All the Time. So this, this could be a really weird one, potentially. <laughs> I'm kind of excited about it. I have no idea what to expect, but it's post World War II. But it's people, you know, who are trying to scrape together their lives after the war and, you know, what happens. They're people living in southern Ohio. And um, fair to say that there's a f an amount of psychological damage that has been done to some of these people. They're not all whole. They're not all mentally doing well. Uh, and this one will star Tom Bomb Holland, Sebastian Stan, Robert Pattinson, and Mia Wasikowski. Has Mia Wasikowski ever played a superhero? I don't think so. I don't think so either. No. So she better get on it. <laughs> Real soon, eh? Yeah. They're, they're gonna kick her out of the club. They are. She was in Damsel with Robert Pattinson. Oh, that was a good movie. That was a really good movie, guys. So, yeah. Uh, th this one, I think, is the most interesting to me on the list just because who, I, I hardly even know what to expect from it. So that's exciting to me. That is exciting. I mean, it has a strong cast, so lots of people believed in it. How's it gonna be? I don't know, but yeah, can't wait to good. find out. Or it could be terrible. We've seen them go both ways. Oh, but... sure we have. That's the way it is with both movies and books, but Let's sometimes hope for the best. you can just enjoy the, des the, the, the journey to the destination. Let's do that. Mm -hmm. In the hot tub. Sounds good. Okay. Good job. <laughs>
<laughs> Thanks for watching, everyone. Bye. Bye.